Joseph Cala from Dinotech Research and uh, in this video here we're going to talk about the Drum Preserve uh, bung unit and the kit the way it comes and in installing it into uh, in this case 30 gallon uh, drum race gas in it. Uh, what we got is this uh, billet aluminum uh, uh, bung which has uh, uh, in this case a tapered VG2 seal uh, rubber seal to match the new style uh, drum fittings. Uh, the old style drums have a flat gasket and the, there's a flat gasket that comes with a kit in case you got old style drums. And the drum preserve unit has uh, a ball valve for controlling the, the, uh, the flow of the fuel coming out. Uh, a 10 psi safety relief valve which is really important uh, in case a uh, regulator um, fails and tries to over pressurize the drum drums have a, um, a, a working pressure, a hydrostatic test pressure of about uh, close to 50 psi, so, but the, having a 10 psi uh, safety relief valve is really important. It's got a, a quarter inch barb fitting for, to, for the nitrogen hose to go on, and on the bottom is, uh, is another barb fitting with a, a siphon hose that goes to the bottom, and the idea is this, that the siphon tube goes to the bottom of the fuel we put enough uh, nitrogen pressure in it to uh, preserve the uh, front ends of the fuel. And uh, this fuel's got a reed vapor pressure rating of uh, say five PSI. We want about three, a little over half, which would be uh, equivalent to the true vapor pressure of the fuel, which is what, what you might get at 70 degrees typical storage temperature. Because as you, if you saw the uh, earlier uh, YouTube video, the reed vapor pressure test, it's all done at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But typical storage temperature is more like 70. And at 70 degrees, the, the vapor pressure is lower. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll install this. Well, the other part of the kit is a, a special low, low output pressure uh, nitrogen regulator that's uh, got a, a 15 PSI gauge on it. And a, and a special light pressure, working pressure spring. So even if a guy goose and uh, turns it all the way in by accident, it, it won't overpressurize the, the drum. So what I'll do is I'm going to install this in the, in the barrel. First thing I got to do is open up the we got a little nice little whoosh of front ends that came out of there. We've lost some of our reed vapor pressure already. So the idea is to quickly get this on, on your sealed drum as soon as you open it. Thread it into the until that rubber seal, a nice tapered seal, seats in there perfectly. It's got a nice uh, pair of flats right on here that uh, are the same size as the nitrogen regulator nut. I just take that up to about 30, p 30 pounds of pounds feet of torque to seal it up. I'll shut this off. Now I'm going to hook up the nitrogen. So the idea is to uh, very gradually pressurize the uh, the drum. Got my hose on there. We don't need a clamp clamp on that because uh, the barb uh, connection gives it a, a tight enough seal. So I got the adjusting screw all the way out on the regulator. I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to gradually feed the pressure to the dr to the drum. Maybe you can hear that starting to pressurize the drum. This takes a few seconds. Now if this was if the drum was full of fuel, it would just take a second and it would be right up to pressure. And I've got quite a lot of head space because I've only got about four gallons of racing gas in the in the drum right now. And it happens to be a mixture of uh, isopentane and, and uh, dead C16 that I'm 
I mixed up for an experiment. Okay, so now, yeah, we're, we're about three PSI now. So now the the drum preserve kit comes with uh, enough fuel, enough uh, line to uh, they have a siphon tube for a 55 gallon barrel, and they have a dispensing uh, hose for uh, filling small jugs or whatever if you're going to say take uh, race gas to uh, a track someplace. So what I'm going to do now is um, talk about um, the importance of being gentle with the fuel when you're pouring it in. I'm using this clear uh, kitty litter container here just as a, for a demonstrator. But what you, what you always want to do is not fill from up here. You want to have the hose all the way to the bottom of the container so we don't agitate. As, as we've said before, uh, agitation is brutal for causing the front ends of the fuel to escape and our re-vapor pressure going down. So what we don't want to do is this. I'll crank this up. Yeah, that's, that's horrible. What we always want to do is start from the bottom and then it's, it's a gentle fill, just like uh, pouring a glass of beer. If you pour it down the side, it won't, won't create a big head. Uh, the other thing that's uh, not necessarily related to the drum preserve unit, but I see this all the time, is um, mixing two-stroke oil with the, with the race gas. Um, a lot of guys will come to the dyno and they'll have, a, say, a half a jug of fuel and they'll pour their oil in enough oil that, to get the mixture that they want and they shake the snot out of the fuel and, and we lose more of the front ends read vapor pressure goes down from doing that. So what, what I think is a better deal would be to take your fuel, say we're going to mix up two gallons of um, race gas with, with our two-stroke oil. We figure out how much oil uh, we need and what I, what I would do is take, take one empty jug, put just a little bit of fuel in it, put exactly the amount of oil you need for all all the fuel that you're going to run it for the day, and mix this up like that. You can agitate this. By doing this, we're losing the, the front ends of the fuel, but we're only losing a, a few ounces of it. So that's all nice and mixed up. And now, if I take my fuel hose and go to the bottom, once again, I'll see how nice and gentle that is. There's no agitation. Just take this and, and again, this is a demonstration. I would, I would fill this up, and while it's doing that, it's mixing the, mixing the oil and the fuel beautifully. So you see, it's all a nice, uniform color, and we have uh, hardly agitated the fuel at all. Another thing that guys do. Uh, sometimes, and this is, this is just, I think it's a mistake, is if somebody will come to the dyno with a, a five gallon pail, seal pail, and will open that up and they put put their oil in there, enough oil to get the five gallons the way they want it, and shake it a little bit. And you know, They're not doing much agitation, but they're probably not doing much oil mixing either, so probably what's in the drum is um, 100 to 1 here, and. 12 to 1 down here, and it's, it's a little scary. So uh, spending the time to do your mixing properly will ensure that you get the, the right oil mixture all the way through your, your supply of gasoline, and you won't uh, lose very many of your front ends of the fuel. But that's about it for, for this little video, and as we learn more from uh, doing this testing, we'll, we'll just keep adding some some more and we can all have our machines running better and making more power.